so it's just different. I now call to order the work session of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, June 1st, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. We uh, received a memo from Vice Mayor Carr stating that he will not be able to uh, attend this work session today due to the illness, and he's asking to be excused, so I need a motion. Motion to excuse. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Vettigiotis? Yes. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Tiapini? Yes. Mayor Hoogus? Yes, thank you. I'd like to uh, remind to everyone that uh, the work sessions are primarily designed for information gathering and guidance. No formal commission decision approving or disapproving on the item might be, ta might be made. Only staff members should be included into the work session discussion unless prior arrangements have been made through the city manager, city clerk, or the city attorney. The first item on the agenda is building code amendments. Mr. LeCourtis, if you present this item. Yes, I'll introduce Kevin Powell to this is his show tonight, so he'll start with number one. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, Kevin Powell, Building Development Director. Uh, what I really want to kind of go into is uh, Chapter 1 of the Florida Building Code allows for uh, local adopted amendments. Basically, we want to look at some of the um, items that we can exempt from permitting that really are kind of uh, cloudy in the, the Florida Building Code. So we want to go ahead and make it clear because I hear a lot of things out there, uh, things that are exempted, but nothing is written down. So I want, you know, something memorialized as to what we do exempt here within the city. So really what I want to do is the, the one-page sheet that just talks about permit exemptions. There's going to be 13 items on there. And it mainly uh, deals with... Uh, residential exemptions to a building permit. Uh, one of the items, the number one item here, is residential non-engineered detached accessory structure. So there's going to be storage sheds, playhouses, fire pits, sunshades, similar items like that. Uh, you know, and we can have a, uh, a maximum amount. You know, I, I threw a, a number in there of 80 square feet. We can go 80 square feet. We can go 100 square feet. It's really, uh, you know, what the board feels uh, within the community, what, you know, what they see out there. Sheds, uh, 8 by 10 seem to be a pretty common size, uh, 8 by 12, somewhere around there. So I just threw a number down of, of 80 square feet. Uh, Going on to item number two, this is something I've heard about since I've been here. It's uh, residential roof repair, less than one square. So, you know, people say, well, I don't need a permit because I'm only doing one square of roofing. It's written down nowhere. I don't, I don't mind it, but I would rather have it written somewhere that says, yes, you can do a roof repair on a residential structure of your own, your own home and, uh, you know, if it's less than one square per year, in other words, we don't want to do one square this week, one square next week, one square the next week, and then, uh, you know, two months we've got a whole brand new roof. So it's what we're saying annually on that. Then we go on to residential landscape retaining walls, not exceeding 18 inches in height. We get a lot of people that want to go ahead and put out the landscape timbers and uh, kind of level their properties up a little bit. I believe 18 inches is not a lot of fill to come in if you're filling behind a, a little retaining wall to try to uh, maintain your property, uh, make it decorative. So I went ahead and threw uh, uh, landscape retaining walls not exceeding the 18 inches in height. Then item number four is residential non-structural concrete pads, walkways. There again, I'm saying 80 square feet. We can go 80 square feet. We can go 100 square feet. Uh, kind of up to the commission. Uh, this is allowing somebody to, to put a, uh, a concrete walkway or a concrete pad in their yard so they can put a, a, a patio area, sit on it, put a, a grill on it or something like that and not require a permit. There again, there's nothing in the building code that addresses that, but when somebody does it, we usually get the phone call and uh, 
kind of force somebody into getting a permit for something that's really not a permittable item. So there again, 80 square feet is just a number I, I threw in there. Uh, residential paver patios, kind of the same concept. Uh, we should be allowing people to do the uh, decorative pavers around their, around their home, walkways from their, their uh, driveway up to their door. Uh, throw another number in there of 80 square feet. We can go larger than that. that that's not a problem. Residential flag poles not exceeding 25 <coughs> feet in height. Sounds a little odd, but I get numerous phone calls from somebody that put a flagpole in their yard, neighbor called on them. Um, there, there's, there's not a reason to uh, permit those. They're, they're not uh, an engineered product. Uh, a lot of times they, you know, they come with the, you know, the instructions of how deep to put it into uh, a sand bed in the ground with a, um, with a sleeve so you can remove the pole. 25 feet in height is a maximum allowed by the zoning code. So that's why we went with 25 feet in height there. And that would be a single flagpole. Uh, so we don't have three, four, five, you know, 25 foot flagpoles across a yard, unless the commission sees something different than that. Um, item number seven is residential stucco repair. There again, throwing a number of 80 square feet. Um, as time goes on and houses settle, you start getting cracking in your stucco. Uh, we should allow the residents to go ahead and do uh, stucco repair on their homes. So if we have an 80 square foot or 100 square foot section of, of stucco, they can repair uh, anything greater than that, of course, and gets into a permittable item because you're, you know, you're removing an excessive amount of, of stucco off of a house. Item number eight is uh, residential prefabricated swimming pools and their accessory to R3, which is a residential dwelling. Uh, they are less than 24 inches deep and do not exceed 1,000 gallons and they must be installed entirely above the ground. What that is is your uh, blow up type of swimming pools you would buy from Walmart, cord and plug on the pump. Uh, stock tank swimming pools are all, you know, kind of the big thing right now. Those are about 750 gallons. Uh, so we really just want to go ahead and exempt those because they're more or less seasonal. Uh, you're going to get them this season. You're going to use them for three, four months. They're going to go bad. And you're going to get rid of them. So there's really nothing that we could permit on those anyways. <clears throat> then, of course, we want to get into the residential painting, papering, tile, carpeting, cabinets, countertops, and similar finish work inside. Uh, there's nothing in the code that addresses those, uh, but we do get a lot of phone calls from people wondering if they need a permit for, for uh, redoing their kitchen cabinets. As long as they're not altering the kitchen, adding additional electrical, that you should be able to go in and, and change your cabinets, change your countertops, change your flooring. Uh, item number 10 is uh, residential <coughs> swings and other uh, playground equipment. This is only on residential. Commercial, that yes, they do need a permit. Residentially, no, you do not need a permit. So we want to go ahead and clarify that. So if somebody wants to put a, a, a swing set, a, a playhouse type of thing, um, that, that's a non-permittable item. Uh, electrical repairs and maintenance, minor work. Um, you know, if they want to change out their receptacles, they want to change lighting on the front porch, they want to change ceiling fans, you should allow a, a contractor should be able to go in and do that and not have to come down and get a permit for, uh, you know, changing their ceiling fan or changing their receptacles within their home. And then the last item is going to be radio and uh, television transmitting stations. Uh, the only thing we get on, on the, uh, the towers are an engineer letter, uh, when they put the, uh, additional, uh, cell pieces on the tower, we get a, a, a letter from, uh, from the engineer on that. However, if we're bringing electrical into it, we will look at those connections. So we're only talking the tower and adding new cell sites on it, that type of thing. We're not going to climb towers. That's what they have the engineers for. So... We're looking at exempting that. Now, out of all these items, you also have the uh, subject to uh, zoning and, and flood requirements. Uh, the zoning requirement would be setback to the property line. So if you get one of these small sheds, uh, you're going to have to keep it back off, off the um, 
property line for the setbacks, and that would be a phone call to planning and zoning to know what the requirements are. And if you're in a special flood hazard area, there may be some requirements required for the uh, flooding, for the flood requirements that we would just give them the information on. Those are the items I'm looking at for permit exemptions that would go into Chapter 1 of the Florida Building Code. Uh, we would go ahead and do an ordinance. We would uh, send that off to the Florida Building Commission, and those would be our exemptions here in Tarpon Springs. Um, with that, any questions? Yes, sir. Mr. Powell, I appreciate you meeting with me in your office to discuss the Building Code amendments and the feed schedule. Question that I have is on Section 113, the Board of Appeals. It's recommended to have a process for appeals. Do we have any process in place here in Tarpon? No, sir. I, um, I just want to go ahead and avoid those areas of, of the proposed uh, changes from the Building Official Association and just stick with our permit exemptions here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stay away from those because, no, we don't have a Board of Appeals. That's another board that we would have to bring on. Uh, so... Um, those Chapter 1 amendments that were presented to us from the uh, uh, Florida Building Official Association, the only thing that I want to do is the permit exemptions and everything else is either addressed in our ordinance by the building code that we've adopted, uh, the uh, property maintenance code that we adopted. So we have that within ordinance. So to me, it's just easier to avoid those areas and just stick strictly to the one section with permit exemptions. Thank you. Uh, in regards to the uh, permit exceptions, I agree that we should have something like that on the record <coughs> explain <coughs> exactly what things they're not required to have permits. A couple questions that I'd like to ask you is on the item number one, which is the, um, uh, the store the sheds that they buy from Walmart or any other place like that, um, what is the common size? Is it actually 80 square feet or 100? The reason I'm asking this is because just about everything that we talked about here, it's 80 square feet. I wonder if 100 square feet would be easy to remember. Yeah, yeah I, like I said, I just put 80 I, square feet down. I wonder if he has any, any, uh, any reason for that. Um, I think pretty common is 8 by 10 eight for by a shed. Ten. Okay. So it, we can go 100. We can go 120. I wouldn't go more than that. Uh, no, I was just wondering what is really the, uh, the common size people will buy. I'd say between 80 and 100. Okay. So we just say 100 that, you know, pretty much. I think 100 would be easy to remember, in my opinion. And that goes for all the others that you have, one through seven. Okay. Uh, now, uh, number six is the residential flagpole exceeding 25 feet in height. The question that I have is we do have a uh, residence that I'd like to have a second pole. One for the American flag, another, uh, the second one for uh, the branch of service that they actually serve. Are they allowed to have a second one? And if they do, they need to get a permit or what? No, we would exempt those, and that would kind of be up to you. You want one flagpole, two flagpoles, whatever it is that the, the board desires on that. I don't know if I would go more than two, but. No, I, I would like to have a second one just for that reason, in my opinion. And the last one, down to the radio and television stations for the uh, towers, are those FCC uh, requirements that they have to follow? Yes. Um, all of our cell towers we have here, uh, everything that's going on them, obviously, will meet FCC requirements. And that is part of the provision is they have uh, engineering that, that provides us the information as to what was done, um, how they were erected, and, and what they've put on it. Taking care of that's all I have. Yes, sir. Commissioner Terrapani. Thanks, Mayor. Um, Kevin, I appreciate you uh, streamlining, or not streamlining, but initiating this process. This is something that you have um, been working on for a while, and I think have had an opportunity to meet with most of us on it. Um, I think anytime we can streamline uh, some of our requirements, whether it's permitting or from a historic preservation board, board standpoint on uh, approved products versus having to have another layer of approval, um, that's a good thing. Um, for residents and contractors alike. Um, the only thing, I, I agree with everything that you've um, presented, and, and I could go with the mayor on the 100 square feet. Um, 
some items more than others, I think that that is probably more pertinent uh, for one being a stucco repair. Sometimes, you know, stucco repairs go a while before they're repaired and you end up taking some stucco off and it ends up being more than 80 square feet, you know. Um, the one thing that I don't see and I know that had at, at one point in time in Florida Building Code, there was um, some details on that as windows in terms of like replacing a window. So I, I want to say I heard something about it. you could replace one window a year or you know sometimes windows get broken. So do you have any that, thoughts on that, that? That's back to these yeah, I've maybe, heard about. Maybe not. <clears throat> right, I've, I've heard about. Sure. Right, so yes, you should be able to do a window repair. Mm -hmm. If it's one window a year, I, I don't have issue with that. Okay. You know, it's just whatever the consensus of the board is. But you're, you're right, one, one window. Um, I don't know if I would really get into the doors mm -hmm. uh, just because of hurricane ratings on those. Um, but a lot of times you're right, you'll get a broken window and it's just easier to replace that one window. I don't, I don't see really anything wrong with that. So that would be something that I would, you know, recommend to the board is that we add one window a year and then just, you know, make it with the caveat that it has to be, you know, to whatever specs or standards or whatever you want to call it in today's building code, whether it's an impact window or double pane window. I think that's probably the biggest thing that makes it easier to swap out a window today is that if it's double pane, you know, it's a pain in the butt to try and replace the glass and you know, then have it sealed again, et cetera. So right. I think that that's something that I would definitely uh, like to add. Okay. Um, and then on number three with the 18 inches, I would just suggest that I, I don't have a problem with that. I think that that's a good thing. I would just say that we try and make it concurrent with uh, whatever the insurance um, threshold is. So, you know, I think in insurance, if, if you have a, a step or a retaining wall or something that's higher than 20 inches, then you might need a railing or you might need a... Yeah, it's um, once you get over 30 inches. Oh, is it 30? Okay. Yeah. Well, then let's not do that. Then let's right. It. No, I, I went ahead because there, there is a height that does require the rail. Right. So that's why I went with the 18. Okay, good. Because if we got any higher than that, then it would start getting into guardrails and all of that. Yeah. Um, I don't think that <coughs> a lot of people are going to go with the 18. You know, you're talking a lot of places, just going to be a couple of block, but we can at least allow up to the 18. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing I think is the the blocks themselves are usually like what like eight or nine inches About and then most eight. people go with like a cap on top of the block mm -hmm. so maybe we would go just a little bit higher than the 18 inches to allow for that additional uh, cap that goes on top of the block 20 inches yeah 20 22 whatever I mean I you know I'm not a licensed contractor um, but I would just say that I think it makes sense to account for that cap being that in a lot of cases, I see them on the retaining walls. Um, so whatever you suggest, you know. Okay, I'll, I'll look at I'll look at uh, what it, it comes out to with the cap block on them. If it's 18, 20, 22, whatever it is, we'll go with up to the top of the cap block. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. Um, and then on number nine, uh, you have at the end and similar finish work. To me, that just goes back to what we're trying to avoid, right? What is similar finish work? So. You know, if whatever we can do to make it. I mean, we're trying to make Mill it work, detailed maybe. now, so yeah. I just don't want to leave it open-ended, okay. you know. Whatever, um, whatever we can do to add more detail and, and not just have the opinion of similar What is similar, work, right. Yeah, then I'm good. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll scratch that and come up with some different wording. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dowd. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Powell, for being here and suggesting these changes. I'm not too particular about permit ex exemptions, um, but as flexible as we can be for our residents, I'm happy to do it. So I think I got what we've suggested here so far, and I, I support what you have as well as increasing all the 80 square foot exemptions to 100 square feet, allowances for an additional second flagpole, adding the one window per year, allowing a higher retaining wall, and clarifying the language on nine. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Ticotis. Thanks, Mayor. <coughs> um, let me just run through a couple of these things. Um, Mr. Powell, on the, um, on the adjustment that the mayor um, had discussed, I've taken a couple of clients through the uh, Building Board of Adjustment Appeals through the county uh, and uh, for the city of Tarpon Springs. That, and as a matter of fact, when I was building director, that's, that was our appeal process. It is. It still is. And so um, I think that would, if it still exists, which I would suspect it does, um, I think that's important for the commission to know that that is the appeal process for 
the city. It's through PCCLB. Right. So I don't think we need to worry about that one. And that's also a little known fact that um, I've had questions from residents um, in the last couple of years. I've told them that's an option as well. Most of the time they've worked it out with the city's <laughs> building department, but, mm -hmm. but that option does exist. Um, the, also, there is some provisions in the building code right now that allow some construction to occur, and I think it's a valuation threshold. Um, in other words, exemptions that are clear that are in the building code. What what would that number be? I think it was a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. So, basically, what we're talking about is anything that would be um, that thousand uh, dollars repairs that sort of thing would be outside of that, or how how would that? It, it would be, be outside of that. But yeah, there is there is a I believe it's a one thousand dollar if the, if it, whatever it is is a thousand dollars that doesn't need a permit. Some of these would be under the thousand dollars. Some of them would be over the thousand dollars. Okay. Um, it, it's just a philosophical thing. If if we can do some of these things that you're listing under that thousand dollars already, I'm not sure that we would need to do an amendment to the building code. But but that's just for discussion here. I'm not sure. Right. And and I and and I, I get where you're coming from on that. It's just um, a lot of times we'll get the phone call. Um, about it and it's a lot easier to say that's exempted because now I got to go was that a thousand dollars worth well a thousand dollars of of repair work or contracting work really isn't a lot of money when you when you're looking at the cost of everything today so to me it's a lot easier to just say no we've exempted that well aren't you going to get those questions anyway things it, that are it, not it, part of the one right of the but it's 13th. a lot easier to say by ordinance it's exempted and that ends it right there versus well, it's a thousand dollars, but I got to see what they've got in material wise and what they're doing. Is it meet the thousand dollars or not meet the thousand okay. dollars? I, I just, I, I guess the counterpoint to that is to, to, and I don't think that would be an issue with you, but anything in the future, I wouldn't want these 13 to displace anything that would all be also be allowed under that thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. You still have that option. Um, these seem to be kind of the big sticking points that we get questions a lot on. So that's why I went ahead and put these in there because uh, sheds, the, the, the re-roof the, or the roof repair, <clears throat> the, the patio walkway things, those are always questions that are always coming up. And if we have a square footage and say, well, if you do less than 100 square feet, I, you know, we just had one the other day. Uh, somebody said, oh, um, it was a, a Connex container on a property. And he says, oh, well, I'm under 120 square feet. I, I don't need a permit. I go, where, where do you get that from? Oh, that's what somebody told me. I says, well, it's a Connex. It's not you a building. You mean that doesn't work? <laughs> well, right, because, you know, at least we can have something to say, no, it is written down. I understand. The, the, the one square of roofing, I've heard that since I've been here for three years now. Yeah, I don't need a permit. It's, it's less than a square. My, my staff says, and I go, well, where's that written at? I don't but, know. It's just what we were told. Wouldn't that be under $1,000? Uh, one square roof, hundred square hundred, feet, uh, right? No, you're probably looking at more than probably looking at thousand dollars. Just no, no, not in shingles, but um, I mean, if it's material a labor, if it's an actual homeowner, yeah, you'd be into it for you know five, six hundred dollars. But as soon as somebody's up on their roof, no, no, I understand that you know, part. And they're, I, they're calling I, and complaining. No different than when we have an owner builder doing their roof, and I have a, a citizen call me and say. I know they're not allowed to do that by law. No, they are. They're an owner builder permit. They can do it. Right. So it's just easier if it's physically written and we can show people that that will end it. Okay. All right. All right. But I agree with the 1,000. I believe it's the 1,000 exemption. I, I just want to be careful that we don't wind up. Uh, kind of creating an issue for ourselves as well. It mm -hmm. says this one place and it says something else in another place and, and I'm not talking about you. You're going to be creating the ordinance, but several years from now, maybe after you know, you're know you out fishing somewhere. Okay, I'll, um, um, I'll look at that exemption in a code and then I'll address it within this. The um, And then I think I don't know if it was you or Commissioner Tirapani, are these based on one year uh, times between repairs you said one window per year one window per year annually on the roof um i don't i don't have an how about, annual how about the stucco i mean foreseeably i could repair you could the, do the same thing as a roof you can repair 
and then next week do another repair and the next thing you have a whole new stuccoed house so we can we can put annually on yeah. that also i mean that's the other point it's something i don't want to gain and i, and I think annually is a good way to address them all okay it doesn't have to be all of them just the ones that you could spread e easily into you know doing the entire house right. or the entire roof as you described right I mean, that defeats the purpose of this exemption and also defeats the purpose of our florida building code right um Um, the other thing, too, you and I discussed um, about administrative variances, and this gets into the, um, uh, these, these numbers that we're talking about, the 100 square feet and things like that. Um, I know these are black and white numbers, and I think there's been a little suggestion here, you know, 8 by 10 sheds, 10 by 10, 10 by 12, that sort of thing. Um, and you may have to come back at some point to us or something like that, but I, I would, and I think you and I talked about, you You know, I used to provide administrative variances on small things because it was obvious it was either for something minor for, you know, to go through an entire board of adjustment and appeals process for something that's silly that, I mean, the guy's just honest and he's, well, I'm four inches off here. And, okay, well, you're going to get the variance anyway. You're not going to tear the entire slab out. Um, I'd like for there to be some consideration at least, I'm offering this or suggesting it to the to my colleagues here, the commissioners, of, of allowing you to have some administrative flexibility, some variance ability. For example, if it's a 100-square-foot shed and the guy comes in and says, look, I've, I've got a 110-square-foot shed for whatever reason, and can I have this exemption? And, okay, well, you know, um, I've already bought it, that sort of thing. I would rather leave that up to you, um, and, and I suspect it wouldn't be any issue, but... If it's an ordinance, it's an ordinance. If it's 100 square feet, it's 100 square feet. But if the ordinance says that we would allow the building director some percentage of uh, 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 exercises judgment for a variance to these dimensions, I think that's perfectly fine. On the um, on the on the stormwater, um, I'm sorry. On the um, on the uh, retaining wall, the landscape retaining wall, um, I was going to ask you, how do these exemptions get worked into the building code? I know the building code is highly uh, structured. There's definitions on everything. And mm -hmm. and let's say we introduce an exemption on this thing. We say a, a, a retaining wall, landscape retaining wall. And there, there isn't a definition for that anywhere in the building code. And a guy comes in and says, well, this is a, a landscape retaining wall. Uh, you know, uh, Commissioner Terrapani had one way of looking at it. I've got another way of looking at it. Um, how, how are we going to work those definitions in to these exemptions in something as formal as the building code? Would we provide separate definitions for them? We can. Okay. We can, we can provide definitions. Uh, once we come up with uh, what we want, uh, it gets adopted by the city, and then it goes to the Florida Building Commission, and then the Florida Building Con Commission recognizes what we put forward. So if we're looking at um, uh, landscape retaining walls, maybe we do something non-structural. That would be fine. Here's, here's my, <laughs> I've been around too much, and as I said, I've been in your shoes, city engineer shoes, and sometimes retaining walls are retaining walls are retaining wall. I could see that there's some historically uh, stormwater flowing across a person's yard. He doesn't want it anymore. He constructs an 18-inch high retaining wall, calls it, puts a little bed in it, but reverses the grade in order to stop the water from coming onto his property and traps it behind the retaining wall and leaves it on the neighbor's property. Those are the sort of things I want to be smarter than just simply stating the way you're describing it, and I'm not sure how we're going to do that, but uh, maybe with setbacks, nothing uh, less than 10 feet away from the property line, but then again, that, that kind of defeats the purpose of a retaining wall for uh, flower beds and things like that. So I think that some of these, we're going to have to give a little more thought to it, just the, of, try and avoid, we're not going to avoid everything. I mean, right. there's some pretty wily people out there. Uh, if they want to do something, they're going to do it. But it, I, I'd like to try and avoid, and it's not so much whether, if, if what they're doing is fine, and, and that's the, mm -hmm. and they're doing it under the exemption, that's fine. As long as it doesn't harm a neighbor, that's the key. 
that's the key to everything. And that, and, and that would be the, um, the issue on that one. Um, on the flagpole, um, I think the flagpole's good. I don't have a problem with the two poles that we're talking about. Um, I just would like to make it clear that we don't wind up allowing flagpoles. Uh, you know, there's going to be the lighting. Um, some people may want some lights are attached to the flagpole in some way or another, um, either for the purpose of the national ensign flying it 24-7. Some person may decide he wants to put a backyard Wi-Fi camera <laughs> on his 25-foot high pole. And, and it's basically into the neighbor's yard, and now we've got another uh, neighbor issue with uh, some guy's got a camera up on my pole, looks right back into my backyard and my swimming pool, and I've got a six-foot-high fence and that sort of thing. I think that we need to kind of, again, think things through a little bit more than just um, stating these um, the way they are. Just let me say about flagpoles. Renee texted me. The residential is allowed to have one flagpole with two flags per pole. So it's just one flagpole? Yeah. It's okay. just one flagpole that's, that's allowed presently by the code. Okay. Well, then that's what we ought to keep it. Yeah. Then we'll go yeah. keep it to one. And then the other, the other thing um, on the flagpoles, uh, the 25 feet, I, did you come up with that number? No, that was, um, I got that from Renee. She says that's the, the height of the flagpole. That's a typical Residential. for a uh, two-story structure. Yeah, that's the maximum height that's allowed right, by height. 20 feet code. for one story, 25 feet for, and I think 25 is good. I mean, they could make it lower. Yes. But up yes, to 25. that's the maximum yeah. height. Um, and when we talked about the broken window, it, it would be basically a, literally a, not just a, it's a replacement that we're talking the about. A replacement, like okay. for like. All right. Um, yeah, not changing the opening or modifying yeah, anything. Right. Um, I think that was... Um, <clears throat> I think that was it. Let me just make sure. Okay. Um, what what would be the game plan? Um, you get the feedback from us, and then uh, City Manager Lacours, we come back to an agenda item at a commission meeting yeah. with a draft uh, ordinance. Yes, could be or come back as an ordinance for your two readings, and of course, public we comment. Tweak, we can retweak it at that time. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's fine. Thank you very much. I think it's an excellent idea. I just want to actually give you a little more flexibility as well in terms of the administrative variance, and that's going to be important to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any uh, addition information that you want to provide on that? Uh, no, I, I've got a direction on this. We're looking at going from 80 square feet to 100 square feet. Uh, we're going to look at the uh, retaining wall. Uh, to the top of the cap block, 18, whatever that comes out, 18, 20, whatever it may come out. Also, uh, rewording with non-structural, not diverting the water to adjacent properties. Um, flagpole, the concern about lighting or camera or something on top of that. So maybe we do something where, you know, they're not able to mount their cameras on there. Um, stucco, we went annually. Um, and then the one window per year, like for like, look at the uh, Florida Building Code for the dollar amount that's in there and what's exempted there. And then the uh, discretion of the building official if something goes over, over the size. Yeah. Okay. And you did say that, uh, Mr. Liquor, you did say that the code says only one pole is allowed? Yes. One pole, two flags. Okay. <coughs> Any other? Yes. Yeah, the one comment I would make on that, and I'm happy to see it in an ordinance form and I guess discuss it at an actual city meeting, I would just be cautious of the building official discretion, not because I don't trust you to make the right choice, it's just the first time you don't give somebody that discretion, they're going to be at City Hall at the next meeting and they're going to say, you guys are playing favorites. So if we are going to go down that path, there has to be some sort of criteria, and then I feel like it kind of introduces the gray area we're trying to avoid here. So I, again, I'm, I'm happy to see it in an ordinance, however it turns out, but... That's just we'll something I'm come up with some wording where we'll take it out completely. Um, yeah, I think I I think that I mean it's not just these exemptions, but he's faced. I mean, I we're all faced with these challenges of somebody coming in with a real honest mistake, and it's it's just ridiculous. It's going to hold up construction if they go through a regular board of adjustment and appeals. But I understand what you're saying. But um, it, I, just if you could 
I mean, I'll, I'll try to come up with some. You're not saying way. don't do it. You're just saying be cautious with what you come back. Yeah, with. I'm. I'm happy to see it in whatever ordinance we get presented to us. All right. Okay. The I think some language already exists in the planning department as a like you mentioned as a percentage. I forget what it was for. I ran into it recently. I, it might be uh, for setbacks. Like if it's less than two percent or something like that, then the planning department or the planning director can make that. Uh, in-house call, so you might look okay. there first. Yeah, I'll get with, with Renee and, and see what, mm -hmm. what's written in theirs and maybe copy something These similar like, to that. Um, tie-in surveys and things. They come back and the slabs off a bit something or something. like that, that where, yeah. like, instead of going for the variance, if it's less than a percentage, then, then the senior, then the uh, planning director can make that call in-house, like what you were talking about, but it already exists within the planning department, so. Probably yeah, I'll, I'll get with Renee and see what they yeah. have in there and try to copy something along those lines, maybe a percentage or something right. instead of, you know, make it across the board. If it's 2% over, we can buy into it or something. Okay. okay. Mr. Liquors, before we go to the uh, item number two, anything that you want to add? No. Okay. Mr. Powell, we're ready for the number two, mm -hmm. which is the fit schedule. Okay. Fit schedule. bring that one paper with me. Okay, so what I'm bringing forward to you is a, a proposed fee schedule change. The fee schedule has not been addressed since uh, 2003. Uh, we are currently the uh, lowest uh, permit fees in the region. Um, and I think that we should look at um, increasing them some. Uh, if we looked at uh, uh, the, the, the value of $1,000 since 2003, I believe it's gone up 47% the value of that dollar, so it'd be about 1400 or so dollars. So we have not um, adjusted uh, through the entire time uh, with our building permit fees. Now, there were some uh, times, obviously, we wouldn't when, when the uh, crash happened in 2007. Um, uh, but I think it's time we start looking at, at uh, changing those fees. One of the other reasons for looking at changing the fees is we are almost 50% funded by the general fund. So we want to try to to reverse that a little bit and bring it down um, that we're not drawing as much from the uh, general fund. So everything I have there is again highlighted in yellow. Those are recommendations. Um, looking towards the, the commission to um, you know, agree or disagree or whatever we want to do, we can make changes as we go along. Um, the current fee schedule for Tarpon is, and this is just the fee schedule alone, is five pages long, um, and it gets uh, quite interesting when you're trying to figure out what a permit fee is. So right now, if we do a building permit fee, you're going to build a new house. We go to the building permit fee. We calculate it off of the value of construction. Then after that, you have to add in your um, electrical, mechanical, and plumbing permits and gas permits. So there's additional fees in that. So those fees all start coming in. What I want to do is take the same concept except everything's included so you as a contractor come in and you you uh, get a permit to build a new house uh, all the fees are collected then and your subcontractors are just signing on to the permit they're not having to come down they're not having to tell me how many hose bibs they have how many receptacles they have trying to figure out all of these things to get an, an additional permit uh, uh, cost on that so by doing this, it's just, it just streamlines it, and the contractor knows exactly what his permit fee is going to be at that point. Not, well, it's going to cost you $1,000 for my portion of it. There's another $150 for the plumber. There's $200 for the electrician. So it just starts to streamline that down to uh, we go in there, and we know what the fee is going to be to build a new structure. 
so that's kind of the difference between that. So looking at the, the new um, fee schedule, it's really one page. All the other pages are just the administrative stuff that um, is not part of the fee schedule, but just shows what the departments, you know, are charging or, or what we uh, um, additional fees that may be in there. So there's also, uh, you're going to see that uh, the very first part of that is uh, based on the building value, what the contractor says the value is. And then there's another part in there that's based on the ICC valuation method. In your backup, you're going to see the uh, ICC building uh, valuation data, and it goes on type of construction, um, occupancy is going to go ahead and give you a dollar amount per square foot. Now, these dollar amounts are a lot lower than your building here currently. However, this is a national average. It's just something that we're able to go by. They take a national average, put it in here, and then we come up with a multiplier. The multiplier I came up with was uh, 0.0075. Um, and when I've run that multiplier against uh, the, val the value method, it comes out pretty close. You know, it's within a couple hundred dollars or a couple thousand dollars on a large project. Now, what's important about this ICC valuation method is there's a house bill that is out there right now, and um, I don't know, maybe the attorney can explain <clears throat> this, that uh, ordered and grossed and enrolled. Does uh, that ordered mean that and grossed and enrolled are all different stages of the, of the legislative process. Uh, the, for example, the bill passed this session sponsored uh, locally by Mr. DeSigley um, was ordered and grossed and enrolled and signed by the governor. It is now uh, with legal effect on its effective date. Okay, so basically we're waiting to go to the governor with that. Uh, on the impact fee bill? No, not on the impact. This is um, House Bill 401. House Bill 401. I, I, I can check on the status and see if okay. the governor signed it yet. So, all right, so what, what is in here on House Bill 401? Um, it says a local government may not require a contract between a builder and an owner for issuance of a building permit or as a requirement for the submission of a building permit. So right now when somebody comes in uh, to pull a permit, we're asking for a contract. Personally, I don't like that. I think that you're giving out your information to anybody that wants to do a public records request. So if I'm bidding against in, any of you and you're awarded the job, I can come here, I can do the public records request, I can pull and see what your bid was on it. That's just me personally. That's why I like the ICC valuation uh, table better. Uh, so that's why that is in there. So we have uh, uh, two areas that we can value a property. One is if the contractor says I'm building a, a $600,000 house, we can go with that. Or if he doesn't, then we go based on square footage, um, the, the uh, occupancy type, type of construction. We come up with that dollar amount, uh, uh, multiply everything together, put the multiplier in there, and then we can come up with the permit fee that way. That also is an all-inclusive permit. We're not going to say you're paying this much for this, and now you have to get a, a electrical permit, a building or a, a plumbing permit, um, mechanical permit. So uh, we're probably one of the very few jurisdictions that do that. The surrounding area, most contractors come in and will say, "I don't just sign on to the permit; I have to pull an additional permit." And we, yes, that's the way we're set up right now. So I would like to get away from that. Um, plan review, uh, the next section in that is 50%, uh, uh, which is standard. That's where we are now. That's where the jurisdictions around us are. That, that's kind of a standard thing. There's no change to, to that additional fee of the building permit with the plan review process. We have in there for um, excessive re-reviews. So uh you submit a plan we review it we return it you return it back we re review it review it it really wasn't addressed we have to send it back after the third time we're just going to have to finally say hey listen there's a 40 dollars fee for this back and forth for you to correct the one thing we asked you three times earlier 
So that's something that uh, is in addition to um, the plan review fee that, we're, that I'm proposing for this. Then we get down into a base permit fee. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at a base permit fee of $75. And we can look at a one trip inspection for, uh, that does not require a plan review. It's a $75 permit. You want to do a mechanical change out on a house? It's $75. You want to do a water heater? $75. You want to put a fence up? $75. You know, it's just easy to go ahead and, you know, you, uh, all those small scope work, it's just easy to say this is what it is versus going to the old uh, schedule and going through and trying to figure out in these five pages, well, if I'm doing an electric service change out, there's no difference in my guys going and looking at a 100 amp service, a 200 amp service, or a 400 amp service. It's still the same amount of work. However, in the current fee schedule, there's a different dollar amount for each and every one of those. It's the same job, the same thing you know, there, there's no difference. So it's just easy to have one set fee to tell somebody, hey, I'm going to do an electric service change. How much is it? 75 bucks. It's quick and easy. Uh, While we're at this pause, I'll yes. just say it, no, no indication yet that it's been signed by the governor. Right. And so we're just waiting on that and yes. looking at it. There's a lot of things in there that I think is going to make it all the way there, just uh, knowing how the this legislature's work up there and what's been added in that bill. I don't see. So that's just something that we, we need to prepare for. And actually every jurisdiction is going to have to prepare for that if we can no longer ask for um, a, a contract. Um, so, the, you know, we're looking at a, a, base P, a, a base permit fee of $75 for a single trip or any, any small scope permit. Uh, two uh, inspection trip, we're uh, residentially looking at $90. And then we get into commercial, kind of the same, the same concept, uh, looking at a one trip of $90 and two trip at 110 These are all numbers that I'm just presenting to you that can be addressed as you would wish those to be. Uh, Re-roofs, we're just going to go on uh, based on the amount of the job. Uh, I think most roofs are going probably under the $20,000 range. So on the spreadsheet, I just threw a $20,000 in there uh, just to see a, a comparison difference between um, our current permit and what I'm proposing. Uh, site permits, there again, it's going to be value of the, of the site work, and that's going to go back to the, um, uh, the value table on the, uh, um, the fee schedule. Uh, Tree removal permits, there's another area we, we have not addressed in, in quite some time looking at um, residential, take, taking those to 50, I think we're at $30 now. There again, that's however the commission wants to address that. Uh, keep it at 30, keep it at 50. Um, and then, uh, so new developments, um, residential and non-residential, we're looking at a $100 uh, a tree permit fee. That would be uh, these large developments we have going in, uh, issue a tree permit fee for, for staff to go out and look at them, evaluate them, um, and then go back and do the inspections for the, the tree barricades and you know what's being removed. So we're looking at um, new development, uh, residential, non-residential, $100, and then, of course, existing residential, non-residential, $50 tree permit. Um, A reinspection fee. Uh, we don't have a reinspection fee for the arborist. Uh, a lot of times, you know, that they'll go out and uh, and, and reinspection fees. I only use them as a, as a tool for people. I don't I don't like to use reinspection fees all the time. Uh, you know, one, two, three trips, and they still aren't getting the tree barricade right or something. That's when you kind of go, hey, look, you know, I've been out here three times. I'm going to have to charge you forty dollars. I don't, I don't like to use it. Uh, I know a lot of jurisdictions use that, and they just constantly uh, use that as, as, a, as a means of uh, generating revenue. I don't do that. I tell my inspectors, you know, only in the extreme case do we do the uh, reinspection fee. Um, not on the first turn down, not even on the second turn down. Uh, but with just something to add in there uh, that's used as a tool. If there's, you know, we've gone 
you know, we got a new development going on there, and my arborist spends several hours a week on that property. You know, sometimes it gets to a point where you want to tell the guy, you know, you're you're dragging us out here all the time. We're you know reinspection fees. Uh, floodplain permits. So in our flood ordinance, we talk about floodplain permits. That's part of our, our CRS points so was having uh, floodplain permits. Uh, we, do, we do have a floodplain uh, permit that we've developed. Um, so new, new developments uh, or, or you know, new construction uh, would go through a, a flood application process. We're looking at for residential a $50 permit fee and then uh, non-residential commercial buildings would be a $100 permit fee. There's a lot of time spent on um, uh, floodplain review, and we don't have any way that we're, we're capturing those hours as to what is spent there. So developing the uh, floodplain permit, as we have in our ordinance saying that we do that, we just want to go ahead and clean that up in our fee schedule to say, yes, we have that. Yes, we do have a fee for our, our, our uh, floodplain permits. The next section on there is expired permits and uh, not as much as what's going on in today's environment, but in the past when construction stopped, uh, there was different phases of construction that they stopped. Uh, so when they uh, came back in to reestablish that permit, uh, you know, the question was, how much is it going to cost you to finish the project? Kind of an open ended question. 10,000 oh, bucks. Okay, here's your permit and go. What we're looking at is uh, we'll, we'll take each stage of what was inspected. And uh, so if you if you just have the foundation, uh, we would only we would charge you 80% of the permit fee. And it goes right on down some some places if it was just a a final building inspection they never got it it would just be a 75 five dollar permit so it just gives us a uh, an area to 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 look at uh what stage they're in what percentage of the the cost for the uh, uh permit would be for the new permit uh section about refunds in there if we make the mistake we refund it if uh, there's uh, something uh, from from the contractor, uh, and we've already invested our time in plan review in that. We would refund the permit fee, but not those additional fees, the, the um, administrative fees and the uh, plan review fee. Um, that's really standard language for most jurisdictions have, you know, the same kind of language in there. Uh, then we look at administrative fees. Um, so if you're uh, changing your prime contractor, so that's uh, you and your contractor have a disagreement. You don't want your contractor anymore. You want to hire a new contractor. That's fine. The contractor you're getting rid of owns that permit. That's his permit. So what, we're, what you have to do is... Um, you're changing your prime contractor, it's gonna be a new permit. That new permit is based on the percentage that we just went over. So depending on at what stage in the contract that they are, that's what we would charge the new, the new contractor uh, to get that permit. Change of subcontractors, uh, there again, it's another, um, I have a disagreement with my air conditioning contractor, I want a new one. Okay, that's fine. It's a $25 fee, you know, administrative because we have to sit down and remove this individual and put that company on in their place. Uh, temporary certificate of occupancies. We get requests for those all the time, and there's a pile of work that goes into those. The apartments is a perfect example. You know, the, the amount of time that we spent in there and, and just gave them their temporary certificate of occupancies, we're looking at saying that if you want a t temporary certificate of occupancy, it's $100 uh, based on the time involved in it because now we get all that information in and then once they get their temporary certificate of occupancy, then it leads into their regular certificate of occupancy. We go ahead and give them that. It's just almost, it's, it's really double the work uh, for them to do that. 
technology fee is kind of the newest thing that is out there. A lot of jurisdictions are starting to get into the technology fee. <clears throat> I don't think that we can incorporate that into the permit fee. I think for uh, finance and accounting, they are going to want to see those everything separate. Uh, so technology fee for the contractors as our um, uh, online uh, uh, plan review that we're, we're establishing now. It's also the way they schedule their inspections. They, they schedule them on the computer, and we're also going into a new phase of that where they can schedule by text. And there's also an, an additional piece to it where uh, when the inspector sets up his day, uh, he'll have his route, you know, stop one, two, three, four, five, and you're able to go ahead and see where that inspector is. So it gives you a better idea of when they're going to arrive at your, your property. So you can say, well, I'm number five on there. I can go, you know, eat breakfast or something and not have to worry about him showing up when I'm not there. Um, so that's what the technology fees would cover. It, it obviously is not going to cover what we're, we're pulling from the general fund every year, but at least will assist in it. Um, I, I calculated uh, based on uh, last year's permitting, it, it may have put in uh, about 20000 in into the technology fee, and I believe our annual budget is somewhere around uh, 25000 27000 just in those areas. And now with the new online permitting, there's another 30000 right there just in that that we would be just pulling from general fund. So uh, contractors use the technology. They like the technology uh, for them to pay a uh, dollar, two dollars, or three dollars versus driving here. They're, they they they'd rather do that than you know spending an hour plus on the road plus their gas uh, coming to and from. Below that we have state fees. That's fixed. There's nothing we can do about that. It's a minimum of two dollars, and then once we go above a certain dollar amount, it's two percent plus one and a half percent that goes to the to the state. There's nothing we can do about that. Then other services provided. <clears throat> These are, uh, you know, the ad administrative uh, fees that uh, staff would use. Uh, a, a good example is we get a, a request for a whole set of house plans. So we take those. We now have to bundle that up. We send it out to um, be scanned or, or printed. So we send those out. And then we, we bring them back in, and then they want them either mailed or, or they're not going to come and pick them up. So it's just a mechanism that if we get inundated with a, a, a lot of work in that, that we can at least say, hey, that's fine, but that's going to be $30. It says in there that we can't just charge you. We have to let you know before you do it. So if you're... Um, you know, got all these different requests, that's fine. And then it gets to a point where staff is going to say, okay, that's going to be, you know, $30 for the hour. Just letting you know if you want to go additional into that. Um, the inspector time, uh, that's $40, which is our reinspection fee. Uh, but that also gets into uh, consultations with, with contractors that want us to do their punch list. We don't mind meeting with contractors. We will go and have conversation with them. But when we're get, being called out on a regular basis to do their punch list, that's when we go, hey, you know, you're the contractor. We're just here doing the inspections. Um, and that just kind of goes on down with the building official and the assistant building official and floodplain coordinator, just information um, if, they, if they have to provide services above and beyond what's in the fee schedule. Not that we would really use it that much. There again, it's just a tool that we would be able to use um, if a situation arises, go back to the apartments. Once again, they inundated us with paperwork and, and time, you know, so it, it takes staff time to pull away from that and concentrate on all the requests and the information that they were giving us at the time, you know, then at, at some point we should have been able to say, Hey, you know, there's, there's a charge for this. Uh, after the fact permits, uh, that's covered by the building code. Um, And then it talks about the reinspection fee of, of $40. Uh, I, don't, I don't push my inspectors to use those unless they go out 
three plus times on the same thing. I don't like when they go to a job, somebody's not home, and they refee him. That's wrong. That's just that's just wrong. But if you schedule the inspection and you're not not home three times, then you're going to let the contractor know, hey, we've been out there three times, nobody's home. He's going to make sure that somebody's going to be there the next time. The last part of this is private provider. This is by statute. Uh, they're saying that if you use a private provider, the building department has to uh, give reduced fees to the private provider. Uh, so what I'm proposing here is that uh, we would um, do 40% of uh, what the permit fee would be. We still have administrative time. We're still responsible for storing that, uh, those plans. So we're, we're responsible for a lot of things except for either doing the plan review or doing the inspections. So by statute, it does require that. So we need to put that in there. And there again, I just went ahead and threw 40% in there, uh, which I felt was a, a, a pretty reasonable figure that uh, we would, it would be 40% of the, um, the permit fees. Uh, other than that, um, I don't have anything else on that. Now, I did run a few numbers at the um, request of Commissioner Vadikiotis on owner builder permits. He had a concern about how many owner builder permits were issued and, and the cost to them. So FY20 owner builder permits were 528 owner builder permits. Out of those 528, 160 were yard sale permits, 90 of those were tree permits, 67 were fence permits, 22 were utility connections for 339, which, and it still can break down into some site work and that type of thing. So there was roughly 139 owner builder permits out of 3,761 permits that we issued for FY20. So I know uh, Commissioner Batty Kudas had a little concern about um, uh, owner builder permits and, and, you know, would this really affect them by uh, increasing the fees? Um, also, I've done a, uh, on a spreadsheet, the permit comparison. <clears throat> I just took some uh, random uh, values, um, residential mechanical, there again, it's currently based on the value of the project. So if we had a $8,500 air conditioning change out right now, it would be on average $89. Proposed fee, $75. Residential water heater change out is $34. Proposed would be $75. Um, a residential re-roof, I just threw a $20,000 value on there. Um, that would be a $125 permit. Uh, the proposed would be a $165 permit. And if we go across and look at the other jurisdictions, um, you know, we're, we're going to be close to, to what Safety Harbor is. Pinellas County, they do, uh, it's 150 up to so many squares, and then after that there's an additional fee to that. So that's why there's a plus next to uh, the Pinellas County. Uh, residential electric service change out. Uh, right now, that would cost you $31. Uh, we're looking at just taking that to a flat fee of <coughs> $75. Here again, Safety Harbor's at $65. Dunedin's at $143. And Pinellas County's at $121 for that same service changeout. Uh, like I said, on the service changeout, it doesn't matter if it's a 60-amp, a 100-amp, a 400-amp. We're still doing the same thing. Um, and the... Uh, the amount of administrative time involved in that and then inspector time going to it. Um, obviously, uh, the, the for an hour of, of an inspector is over the $75 and everything that's been done within. I took some uh, basic um, construction values uh, so if we had a $50,000 project, we're currently at $175 for that permit. Proposed would raise that up to $345. And if we look at the other municipalities around us, 
Uh, that same permit in Safety Harbor would be 300 at 1850, Pinellas County at 2200. A $600,000 value job would be uh, 1865. We would move that up to uh, 2200. That would be comparable to Safety Harbor at the same amount. Uh, Dunedin would be uh, 5,850 for that same permit. And then Pinellas County would be at 6,600 for that same permit. And we go up with the, the $2 million permit. Uh, the one thing on the Safety Harbor one, we're looking at uh, our proposed at 8,600 and they're at 7,800. On Safety Harbor, you're gonna have to add in your mechanical, plumbing, electrical, gas. Those are extra fees there. So that's gonna bring them up above where we're at where we're talking ours is all inclusive where Safety Harbor, there's gonna be additional uh, uh, fees for uh, the MEPs or the, the trades. Then I went ahead and took uh, one building out of the new apartments. Uh, that permit fee for one building was uh, a $30,000 permit. So under the new value what they told us the value was, it would have been a $42,000 permit. And under the new ICC valuation table, it would have been a $47,000 permit if they didn't want to give us their, their contract. Safety Harbor would be at 37,000 plus fees, all the additional fees on top of that. Um, Dunedin would have been a $66,400 permit and Pinellas County would have been a $69,900 permit for those same apartments that we built here at a $30,000 uh, permit fee for just one building. Uh, the valuation was based on 55,000 square feet and the value of that one particular building was $6,658. So that's where I came up with those, those numbers there. So I don't think that we're going to be that far off from the surrounding communities. Um, Pinellas County has updated their uh, fee schedule, FY21. <clears throat> Dunedin, I believe, was 17 is the last time they did theirs. And Safety Harbor, I believe, was around 13, somewhere around in there, 12, 13 for theirs. So they're probably going to be due to looking at um, upgrading uh, their fee schedule potentially. Uh, don't know, but... Um, we're right now we are the lowest permit fee in the entire region. Um, other than that, I'm open for questions. Mr. Powell, I want to thank you for updating the uh, permit process and the prices. I got several questions that I'd like to ask you. What is the percentage of the building department budget that is covered by the uh, permit revenue? Almost 50%. And with the new changes, really it's not going to change much, is it? I would think that we would be about 25% from general fund, just kind of throwing some numbers together. I would think about 25%. We're not going to be 100%. We're not going to fund ourselves 100%. We're not an enterprise fund. Okay. We're still going to offset our fees by general fund. Okay. Thank you. I like the, uh, the short form, the uh, ICC valuation method that you were you know, you explained to us earlier. Can you kind of explain how did you come up with the uh, percent modified, which is 0.75%? I just started putting uh, multipliers together to try to base it around the, the proposed permit fee, trying to stay as close as we can. So 0 0.0075, if you read the, um, if, if you read the ICC evaluation table, it says uh, if you're trying to say, uh, be 75% of, of your budget coming from permits, 25 from from general fund, then you would use that multiplier. So it, it worked, it seemed like it worked. We can tweak that one way or the other. We can bring it down a little bit, but it's, it's pretty close if we did um, this new fee schedule based on a value. And now it, it, it may come out less on a higher value project. So if, if those same apartments were $7 million, the evaluation would stay the same, the ICC valuation would stay the same, but you would increase the permit fee based on going to $7 million or $8 million. 
it's not going to be based on the dollar amount. So they came in at at uh, uh, six million dollars. Maybe that was right. Maybe it wasn't. Don't know. Mm -hmm. The uh, ICC square footage data. You, you you said that it's actually below the average, but it's under the national. It, it's it's a national average. How often do they update that? Every six months. Okay. So yeah. So depending on uh, back in 2007 during the crash, 2008, they decreased. Um, a, a, if I remember correctly, on a residential building at one time, they were down to about $111 a square foot. Right now, they're at I think $132 a square foot. Now that's taking a national average. That's you know, middle America all the way out to the coast, north and south. They just average all that together and um, come up with a permit fee. Can you build a single family dwelling for $123 a square foot with a contractor here? No. No, you can't. Especially in a special flood hazard area. You're going to look at probably 250 When was the last time that our uh, permit uh, process was uh, updated? 2003. Ooh. Long time ago. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking the uh, the comparison spreadsheet that you provided to us. Uh, what you propose is actually much lower than than eating Pinellas and Oldsmar because Pinellas is actually, I mean, uh, Oldsmar is actually covered by Pinellas County, correct? Yes. So we're about the same as the Safety Harbor. So I kind of I'm okay with that, knowing that uh, we are on the lower part of. Uh, uh, compared to the other cities, um, this way uh, it makes it a lot easier. But I, I like the fact that uh, large projects like the uh, Ikaria apartments that they've been uh, undercharged. So I think it's time to bring it up to uh, would be fair for uh, for them yeah, to pay I, their I, share. I, I agree. I believe that that was undercharged as much time as we spent out there um, on that job. Okay. Uh, one question that I have that you brought up about technology fee, that's only one dollar. I mean, come on, one dollar, that doesn't get you anywhere. It's not even a Coke. Huh? huh? Is that what you think is worth the service that they get? M must be more than that. I, 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 once you get into the bigger projects, you get a half a percent and a one percent, I believe I have on there. Yeah. Um, I just think these small scope permits, $75 permit, a dollar, I don't. I mean, what 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 are we going to hit them with on uh, on that? I just. What are the other cities are charging for? Um, I would have to look through the uh, Pinellas County has it in theirs. I just don't have Pinellas County up here with me. I didn't see it. So. It's yeah, it's buried in there somewhere. That's that's um, quite a fee schedule okay. to go through. What I was thinking is to be compatible to the other cities too, because it seems like a one dollar is not really that much to uh, to put that on. Well, I'm you know, okay. trying to. Not, you know, seventy-five dollar permit. <laughs> I mean, you give one dollar. Okay. It's just, yeah, I, 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 don't know. I don't, I don't think it's, it's that bad. But I'll, I'll, I'll look at try to compare the other jurisdictions. But I, I know I looked at St. Pete. They had it. Pinellas County had it. Uh, Temple Terrace had it. Um, so yeah, I've, I've looked at uh, different areas and their fee. And I w wasn't trying to compete with them. I was trying to at least. Um, offset some of the costs from the general fund into our technology. Yeah. My last question, uh, Mr. Moore just said that uh, House Bill 401 has not been signed by the governor yet. What yeah. happens if it doesn't? If it does? If it does not. Oh, if it does not, then we can request them to give us a signed contract. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, they can give it to us. And that's fine, but we if if that does get signed, we cannot make it part of the permit process that you must give us a signed contract. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, Coach and Terrapin. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Kevin, thanks again for your presentation. Um, to think that we haven't updated these fees since 2003 is kind of <clears throat> eye-opening. So, again, I appreciate you taking the lead and in initiating that. Um, my biggest concern, of, if any, as it relates to this, is just our um, cost to the consumer and trying to, you know, not burden the, the residents because ultimately that's going to be who's going to be footing mm -hmm. the bill on this. Um, so 
you know, when you look at our impact fees, which I think that we should look at comparatively with other communities and jurisdictions as well as we're talking about this, and then you add on some of these other expenses, that would just be my concern, if any, is that, you know, we're not just continuing to add costs and we're trying to remain competitive with other communities, which I'm glad to see that I think with that we are. Um, I think we all want to um, remain competitive with the surrounding communities. Um, so that said, I think that the uh, adding 25% um, uh, are not adding, but recouping 25% of your budget to your department through these added fees, I think is strong for us. And I think that's a good thing that we're not continuing to bear so much on the general fund, although we're not, like you said, an enterprise fund. Um, so I'm appreciative that in some areas you're continuing to streamline some of the permit fees like the uh, electrical, mechanical, water heater. I think that that's a good idea, even though that it is going up a little bit from where it is today. Um, as you mentioned, it takes the same amount of work for our department and for the guys in the field, so I can definitely um, support that. Um, and then uh, I think keeping people honest with some of the reinspection fees is a good idea. Um, I think that that's what it does when you know, ultimately, again, the consumer or the resident starts mm -hmm. to get the, ch the charge from their contractor because the, our department or our guys had to go back out a, a third or a fourth time, um, and then they start to get these $40 charges. I think that that will, like I said, keep people honest. Um, and then the, uh, the $1 tech fee, I, I don't have an issue with that. I think that we could definitely charge more, but for me, what I think that that does is that's going to encourage the utilization of the technology, right? And ultimately, us offering the technology doesn't, it's not like it costs us a whole lot of money. So while I would support, you know, maybe going up a little bit, well, I mean, I mean, on, from a volume perspective, okay, right? Okay, like, right, I right, mean, right, ultimately right. it costs money, okay. but when you start to look at really utilizing it from a volume stance, it starts to pay for itself. Yes. So I think that, you know, by making that dollar fee little, it encourages the utilization of the use of the technology from contractors or residents or whatever. And in the long run, that, that goes a long way with our department, right, in terms yes. of, like, cost. So I think that that's a good idea. I think that we could charge a little bit more, um, but I don't, I don't think that it's necessary. Um, <clears throat> the no sign, uh, not having to submit the signed contract, I agree with you. I think that that, you know, from a public record standpoint is probably a positive thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would hope that the governor would sign that, and I imagine that he would. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, yeah, right. Um, and then, uh, let's see, do I have anything else? The only, the only real concern that I would have is just the construction values, um, just the, the additional charges that are associated with that. But again, if we haven't updated since 2003, then it's well past time, right? And ultimately, we're still maintaining competitiveness with the surrounding communities, which, which is what the mayor mentioned. So, I mean, across the board, uh, with exception to the $2 million thing at 8600 but then again, you mentioned by the time, with compar comparatively to Safety Harbor, by the time you add in the electrical, mechanical, and plumbing, ultimately, we're less than any of the surrounding communities. So yes. I'm glad to see that. Um, I'm a little bit surprised at how much the county is charging, but that's that's not necessarily here nor there. Um, so with that, again, I just I thank you for diving into this and sinking your teeth into it. and. Um, keeping us competitive and also updating our fees and uh, looking forward to the future as you continue to uh, update our, our building department and streamline us more and bring us more into the future with uh, some of this IT stuff. So thank you. Commissioner Dowling. <coughs> yeah, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Um, similar theme from the first response is just that thank you again for streamlining this for us. It hasn't been updated since 2003. Really glad that we're going to get... Um, you know, still be on the lower end, obviously, uh, in comparison to other surrounding cities, but also kind of come back into the modern age and not get, uh, you know, not get taken advantage of, kind of like the, the Ikaria apartments ended up being. Uh, the only main concern I have about these fees is the technology fee. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we want to do a reminder to say, hey, use our technology, I'm fine to do that. But just based on principle, the logic of a technology fee, which is really just kind of a convenience fee, you know, it's it's frustrating for somebody to see that on a bill. We all get bills or we all get, you know, whether it's a cell, cell carrier or whatever, you see those little fees and it's a dollar. It's not enough for me to make us think about. It's not enough for me to probably email about. But at the end of the day, the logic of it is that, you know, as time goes on and access to technology increases, 
why would I be paying a premium for you to use all the technological tools at your disposal to help me or to help smoothen out the process? To me, I mean, the technology fee, I get the over 500000 That's really when you're going to start to see some revenue there. But, I mean, I think we're, we're charging literal pennies to our residents for different projects for it. I just think it's a gimmicky fee. Um, that's really, I mean, uh, other than, really, really, that's the only thing I want to see changed on this is just I, I don't support the technology fee. I think it's just something that we're throwing in there to make a couple extra bucks. Okay, yeah, I understand. It's just that when, when we look in our budget, um, there again, twenty five, twenty seven thousand dollars $27,000 is coming out of the general fund to um, <clears throat> support the technology that we have, the um, IVR system that uh, you're scheduling your inspections, the uh, electronic plan review. Uh, that's, that's really what it is. So we're, we're pulling from the general fund when it's mainly contractors that are using that technology. That's how they schedule. They, they schedule by the computer. They, they schedule by text. Nobody calls them. But yeah. I, I, I appreciate no, where you're coming I, yeah, from on that. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, we're literally talking about the most minor fee in the, in the whole process. Right, just, right, just trying to offset some of that cost is all we're trying to do. Uh, understood. I'm good, Mayor. Okay. Good, Mr. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. All right. Um, the, um, yeah, I, I'm going to say something a little bit about the owner-builder thing, but um, I, I guess your objective with a fee increase is to um, basically uh, self-fund the department at about a 75% level. Is that correct? Where we were 51%? Right. Yeah, I yeah think, we're just we're just trying to get uh, where we're not pulling as much from the general fund. Right. I think it's a really good idea to to establish an objective. This is what my objective is with these fees, so it's easily explainable to the residents. Because, um, getting back to a couple of comments this evening, they're paying for it, whether they're paying for it in a building permit fee or, or they're through the their property taxes. Right. It's one way or the other, <laughs> and um, and. Um, and I think it's important to, to recognize that. Now, I'm not going to try and draw any logic to what's better or not and, and you know, that sort of thing, but, but, but it's important to recognize that. Um, and it may be worth uh, between now and the time that the um, ordinance comes. This will be by ordinance as well? Yes, sir. Okay. By the time this comes back uh, for ordinance, it may be a good thing for Mr. Herring or, uh, to do a pro forma with just kind of a sample year with Mr. Powell to determine exactly what the increase is going to be over what, what that particular model year was. Uh, let's say it was uh, $1.2 billion. I think our budget for the building department this year is one point two. Roughly, yes, yeah. sir. And, um, and let's just see how much of that is to see whether we're going to get close to that or not. I think that would be good. Um, the, um, and I had a question I forgot to ask you, but it's all related when we talk about older builder versus contractor, we're not making a distinction in the permit fees. Is that correct? No, sir. And that also applies to the exemptions that we talked about earlier? Yes, sir. Okay, so if a contractor comes in, or let's say you show up and there's uh, uh, one of the roofing contractors up on the roof, and, and what are you doing? You don't have a permit. And he says, well, I'm doing less than a, a square. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the one thing as far as the, um, and I'm very happy to see that we're moving in further into the digital age, um, if you will. Um, and I noticed that um, in the uh, schedule that you gave me uh, earlier, that one page that you, um, <coughs> it was the number of permits and things like that. There was a, a, a couple of lines in there on online permits. And um, I also know that we do digital inspections now as well in yes, some sir. form. Yes, sir. We, we uh, have but, the ability to do that but now. Am I missing this? I don't see any kind of a discount for that uh, in either situation. No. Um, the uh, video inspection uh, that was going really good during uh, COVID, but for whatever reason, the contractors have completely backed away from it now. Um, we, we try to push it, but... What, well, is that your preference to try and push that? Um, yes, I would like it. Uh, but then again, 
we're, we're nine square miles, 15 minutes from anywhere. Okay. It, it, it makes it, it makes it tough. Now I, I've used it at night when uh, the hospital was being re-roofed. So, uh, you know, midnight, I would get a call in on that and I was able to do, do the inspection that way instead of driving here, going up on the roof and, and doing the inspection. So, um, we used it more during the, the peak of COVID, but the contractors for whatever reason are kind of just wanting to go back to business as usual. Right. I, I don't want to get into the operation of the department, but if it was something that you would prefer to move that, I would actually suggest maybe bumping up the fees and then offering a discount for the uh, digital version of it to kind of incentivize that process if you're having some difficulty for them to go in that direction. I think at some, I mean, we're going to be paying $65,000 a year for that uh, that software system. Oh, for the uh, online plan submittal? Right, right. right. And, and, of course, the video uh, inspections, which I think is a good idea. It's just... Yeah, we've been lucky with that. The developer, we're, we're using that. That doesn't cost us yeah, anything. Yeah, so okay. uh, it, we're, we're kind of the guinea pig jurisdiction, but all the other jurisdictions are paying for yeah, it. That's just a thought. You and the city manager can talk it over some more about that. Okay. Um, the... Um, <coughs> And also, I wanted to remind everybody there's one of the good reasons of what not, why not to go to an enterprise fund is you've got good years, boon years, and bad years, and bust years. And right now, I would suggest that we have a good year, a boon year, and um, maybe this will give us the 75%, but in those bust years, we're going to be right back to 50% of the, the, the general fund uh, covering the, uh, uh, the building department. So uh, it, this is a moving target, and we're we're 75 percent during a boon year at least that's what i'm understanding at this point um the last comment i had was a um, one of the biggest complaints i've gotten is that i'm paying I, I'm, I'm my supplies are less than a hundred dollars but my permit fee is you know eighty dollars or something like that now don't ask me for an example <laughs> but i could give you a hypothetical for example, the um, the the plain um, the permit fee, the base permit fee of seventy five dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, if I had two sections of fence for whatever weird situation, I wanted to put two six inch se sections, two six foot sections of fence somewhere, and I've got to come in, get a permit, plan review, the whole thing, and um, and that's going to cost me seventy five dollars. Whereas maybe the the this, this again, this is a hypothetical, maybe the fence materials $75 as well mm -hmm. and I would like to at least have some consideration that it would be a, a 75 percent $75 base fee as you're describing or some percentage of the cost of materials uh, whichever is less to kind of take the edge off of that a little bit um, and don't don't ask me whether it's 10 percent or 15 percent that's something for if the if the commission feels that that might be something that they'd like to explore i'd certainly leave it up to you i don't know but that's just a thought but that would help with one of the you know biggest i don't want to say complaints but in a form it is a complaint but biggest observations and feedback i get i, I think i think we should throw fence repairs into our pardon me i think we should throw fence repairs into our um no permit need or, or small sections or something like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I, and, and I have problem with that. You're 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 completely right on that. I, I do have issue with that, but that is something I didn't even think about. Maybe we'll throw that into our exempt, you know, well, the, fence the repair fence, or something. I mean, I knew something about what it requires to put a fence in because mm -hmm. of the plan review, but there are other. But if you're doing a repair. No, no, but what I'm saying is there's other situations like that where the materials are, let's say, $80 and it's a flat fee. I mean, it's not an exemption, and it might right. be a life safety issue or something like that. But you do need to have it inspected, and I understand that, but it's almost a little, from my, it, it's a little, um, it, it would be hard for me to come in. I, You know, if you remember the door, I, I wound up having to hire an engineer and everything, and I think the door was like $300 for the blank. I didn't complain. I went ahead and did it, and, but I had to do the engineering, the whole thing. Yeah, on for it, the so. alternative method right, of compliance. Right, and that's okay. That's yeah. what the that's what the building code required. That wasn't right. an issue. But for some other people, that if their doors are just rotting, and we're trying to make some improvements in the city, for them to go out and and you know that that's a different cost, and maybe we could help them a little bit with the um, uh, with the permit fee. But of course, that would be up to the commission and see if they want to. 
head in that direction a little bit. Again, it would be like 70, your base fee plus or, or some percentage of the cost of materials, uh, would it, whichever is less. So uh, I think that was, uh, let's see, I think that's all the comments I had on this. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments before? No? Mr. LeCourse, do you have any uh, anything that you want to share with us? On uh, number two? Yes. No. Mr. Powell, any additional information that you want to? No, provide? sir. <clears throat> I appreciate uh, the opportunity to present this to you. Um, I'll go ahead and take uh, these items that we've discussed and um, move forward to bring it to the board as uh, ordinance and then uh, move on from there. But thanks again. I appreciate it. Do you, do you uh, excuse me, Mayor, may I say something? Sure. Do, do you need any specific guidance that you may be a little fuzzy on right now? I mean, that's going to be really well. I got the. I, I wrote down the items out on the uh, permit exemptions, and in your concern about the small scope permit and the uh, fee reduction, and then Commissioner Donovan and his technology fee. So those are the ones. That, I see. Is that it for everybody? That will come back to us, and we'll discuss. I just it want to make sure yeah. that um, you know what I'm saying. I, I don't want um, there to be any issues if. If we miss something or something well, is included. Again, the so. point that I want to make is looking at the uh, competitor uh, spreadsheet that you provided to us. It shows that we are on, the, uh, on a low end from all the other cities. It doesn't show Allsmore, but I want to point out that uh, Allsmore engineering and permits uh, is under the Pinellas County. So their prices is really pretty high. Um, and the pro forma was the other item? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, when you think you're going to bring it to us, and how fast do you want it to have these um, uh, updates? I'm going to start working on that. Um, I will be out with the military for the next two weeks, so and it's up to you when I come back, I'll be it. able to spend more time on that. Um, I'll get with the uh, city manager and see where we can go ahead and fit that in, but I'll start working on that ordinance. I, I have a question on that. Mary. Sure. Sure. Um, we're talking about the first of the year would be the earliest. Uh, I'm sorry, the first, the fiscal year is what we're talking about, the changes going into effect or sometimes yes. sooner? Yeah, yeah. I think the start of the fiscal year. Yeah, I don't know that, I mean, from my perspective, to bump up the fees, I think at this point we should give that grace period maybe October 1st. Mm -hmm. So we've got some time, I guess, is what I'm yeah. getting at. Okay. I, I'm not rushing you in any way. I just want to make sure that we have it when you, ne when you need it. That's all. Well... If we do the pro forma, though, for the budget process, there's going to be that, um, I think, maybe about two hundred and fifty, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 more um, if that's what we're talking about, the 1.2 roughly, and we're at 50% now, so it'd be about two hundred and fifty for the budget this year because I know Ron's already probably pulling the hair out of his head trying to get things to balance with everything. So um, I'll leave it up to you as far as how to handle that, but 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 don't forget that amount. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Anything else? If not, that concludes the agenda tonight. And thank you, Mr. Powell. Thank you. And we're going to go to staff comments. Chief Young. Uh, no comments. Mr. City Attorney, thank you, Mr. Moore, for being here with us tonight. It's a pleasure. No comments. <laughs> okay. Mr. Lecours. Uh, um. I hope you all have in front of you. I think we've got, although it says tentative, I think we've got the final um, budget adoption schedule for the meetings of, of the board with some changes. I also on the right side have available, other available meeting dates. Bring it with me. Um, get that's an extra okay. copy to bring it with yeah, me. I don't have that either. Oh, I don't have it. We don't have oh, it. Did, we're supposed to be left in here. You see how it is? There you go. Come back well, to you. you want to just pass it down? I'll take a picture of it. <laughs> we, we can send it. Yeah, we can send it. I thought they were supposed to be up here. Oh, two things. Uh, is there anything over? Oh, that agenda. No. Okay. Um, basically, uh, for the budget adoption schedule, the only thing that changed was the two public hearings, um, September seventh and September fifteenth. And then on the other available meetings, um, again, there's two of them that are starred, and that would be Tuesday, June 29th, and Thursday, July 22nd. They're starred because Mr. Trask is available. There are a couple 
issues that may be coming up in the next two weeks that we I think one would be a work session, the other would be a special session. I'll know within the tech next two weeks, but keep an eye on reserving those two two dates um, for the possibility of it when when you get it. And, and again, we'll get a copy. And, you mean executive session? No, no. Executive session? No, it'd probably be a work, one would be a work session and one would be a special session on some issues that, uh, you know, <clears throat> that that come to the forefront of the other work session that they come to the forefront. Um, and then otherwise, those dates, um, those dates that can be available, there they are. <laughs> she put them on mine instead. Maybe she thought you were going to be here. Let me pass all of these down. She just said she was going to put them in a clerk's basement. So, so those are some other dates. For instance, if we need to move an extra um, budget meeting, um, probably the first budget work session that we have with the board, probably a lot of that's going to be dealing with the salary, the the salary study, and possibly positions. Um, we're just I, I don't see a spot in the upcoming meetings where we're even going to be able to talk about. The salary study, I'd hope to put that on a meeting, but looking at the meetings from now until these budget meetings, um, you know, I'm, I'm pulling things off because we're just not going to get through them in time. So, so when you look at the other available meeting dates, that may be to add another work session um, with the board. Um, when we bring the budget to you, there's going to be, it's going to be a little different where we're going to not... Um, place as much into the budget, but we're going to have um, charts with things for the board to be more involved in. Remember last year we talked about we had placed things in the budget, and then there was a total left for the board to do. Um, we're going to try to, um, any gains that we get, for instance, we gain money with the property appraisers' um, valuations, so that money instead, of, which, which could be, if it doesn't adjust too much, you know, I think about a four hundred thousand dollar. We're not going to place that anywhere. It's going to be, it's going to be for us to discuss with the board in these budget work sessions to place in the budget. Um, so we may need one of these other available meeting dates that are on the right um, to have an extra work session with the board. Um, I think last year we and we did three budget work sessions um, to get through the budget. Um, Again, we don't know what we had three scheduled for this year, but we've got these other dates that may be available if we need to add a, add another meeting. And again, they're all in plenty of time since they're in July and early August. There's plenty of time before the public hearings in September um, for the board to have a lot more input in uh, some of the funds and, and where they go. So so that's kind of our our concept and our change with with this budget year. So. Um, the meeting schedules are hopefully if anything comes up, I know I've sent it to you several times and some changes have come up. Um, if any changes come up, I need to know, but those two star dates on the other available meetings, the, the tw June 29th and July 22nd, please try to, to hold open because the two items we would, would need Mr. Trouse there for those items. So I've got a question for the city manager unless somebody else has one. Mm -hmm. Um, he and I spoke a little bit about this, but um, I, I, what I was trying to get at was not just the dates, but also the specific, uh, for example, the, um, the salary review and the personnel um, request. Uh, wouldn't that be a separate workshop? Would that be a budget? Workshop? I was looking at that for the, for the first budget work session. Okay. And what about, for example, the town halls that we had promised the, um, the residents to you know, I think we were going to do, uh, um, for example, the Safford, not the Safford House, but the uh, Hoffman um, Sunbay property is what I was talking about, the, it, with a couple of ideas trying to figure out what the residents wanted to have done on that. That was going to be a town hall. That's another thing that we could use those other available meeting dates for if, depending on the two items that may have to come to you that I mentioned for the 29th and 22nd, and if we don't use those other dates for budget, that's at the option for the commission um, if they want to do, you know, with summer being this vacation schedule with a lot of you, it's, it, it's, it, you saw how tough it was to have meetings. And obviously these are all things where we want a full board to attend and stuff. So those other available dates, if we feel that one's coming up now, it only goes to mid August, obviously we'll have September, October dates, but if, but if there's something that really needs to come up, 
um, that we want to have town hall wise, work session, special session, that sign of thing. Those are the available dates that this board could decide to, to do them on. Yeah. I mean, I, I, for example, I, maybe I'm mistaken, but I thought we were going to have a sponge docs town hall meeting or that's on, that's on the list to do. Right. So, and then, and the reason why I, and then there was a priorities that I think the mayor and vice mayor Carr had brought up a, you know, in other words, a separate meeting to discuss the priorities before we got into the uh, budget. So I know we're probably going to have like first line projects that we've agreed to. And then uh, the department's put forward, we're going to agree to some of these. And then some of these others are going to fall back again to some secondary, what do they call wait list projects that mm -hmm. we talked about last year. And I think it just, it's an important, and, and what I'm getting at, the town halls, the, the, um, the, you, the personnel thing, the, um, the, the sponge docks, um, the downtown as well, we could roll those up and together, but all of those are going to have an impact on the budget, I, I would assume. In other words, for example, whatever we want to, let's say on the, on the hop and Sunday, we don't want to do anything like, let's say, move the Safford house, but is that something we're just going to leave the property idle for another year or do we want to put sod and irrigation down and things like that, at least to, to dress it up so it just doesn't continue looking the way it does? Those are the sort of things I'd like to flesh out those ideas for the budget. And if we could, if you could actually just, I don't know how to do that, maybe with you and the mayor as far as setting these meetings in the future, maybe actually identify, pencil in specifically what the topics of those, what the those meetings are going to actually be like let's say a town hall meeting for the Sun Bay Hoffman property um, um, work session for budget priorities work session for um, the other things that I, I mentioned just uh, rather than just showing dates and that's the thing I'm getting there's it's not so much I'm available that's not an issue I don't really care about the dates except for that one week but what's important to me is that making sure that we've discussed a lot of this stuff before we get to that September 15th time frame and we're finalizing and, and finishing up the budget and a lot of the things that we'll still have questions about for example the Sun Bay and Hoffman property we didn't really discuss it what are we going to do with that and and it's just would be sad to just continue leaving these things as loose ends uh, when we have the opportunity to schedule them right now uh, as part of this I, it's a lot I know but with the COVID I understand that but it, <coughs> still, it still needs to be done you, you know what I'm saying. In other words, identify what the topics are for each of these dates, and if we have to replace one meeting date for something else, that's fine, but at least we we can get an idea of when we're going to talk about these things. There'll be a schedule for something that the residents can look at that's of interest to them, and, and uh, right now it's there's nothing there except just dates. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, we mentioned, you mentioned earlier about the uh, wages review. This is something I requested. And I think uh, it's a good idea to, uh, to discuss that before the, uh, the, the first uh, budget work session. That way we have an idea exactly what expenses we're going to have, if any. And we can use one of those days that you got, uh, like a Wednesday, June the 30th. Is that... You want to, is something you want to look at your schedule and then we talk about that? Or Again, what? it's up to the board. Again, remember, we may have to have a meeting Tuesday, June 29th. So mm -hmm. that would be a meeting June 29th and a meeting the 30th I for think, that. Yeah, I didn't say June 29th because you got to start on it. I thought you got something special. Well, that's what I mean, but, what but, but that would be two me meetings you'd be scheduling for that week. Yeah. Would it, would it be fair so, to let the city manager yeah, uh, I think work it's time on the schedule? Look at your schedule first and then we decide. But uh, those two items, like the uh, wages... Uh, they need to be uh, wages review. We need to discuss that. That's something we've been waiting for a long time to have. And then the the budget, uh, the, the project's priority list. Uh, yeah, I mean, last year Those two items, is, it, it has to be done. Yeah. It's related to the budget. Well, again, just remember, you know, and I maybe need to hear some input from all the board members, but your first, second, and third budget work session, obviously your... Your um, your board budget advisory board is hearing the you know the nuts and bolts and, and the smaller yeah. things, 
I envision a lot of those three workshops, first, second, and third workshops, talking about those issues and stuff. Yeah. That's how I envision those. Were now, now again, that's just how I envision. This is your this is your work session to do the budget. So it depends what you're envisioning. With the exception of last year, we only had two work sessions, two uh, budget work sessions. Last year we needed three, and this year you have scheduled three. Uh, budget work session, so I think we'll be able to cover that. In no, um, is that one? Mayor, I just want to make sure. Last year we had, I, as far as I'm concerned, we had some problems, and it wasn't so much. Um, it was a little bit of a disappointment in that we wound up not really addressing everything with some of the projects. We left them hanging, and I know what you're saying, and that's all I'm getting. I'm supporting what you're saying, and I think we need to take a little more time to, to pin some of these things down before we get to decision time on the budget itself. I mean, if we start making some changes, Mr. Herring is going to have to turn the crank in order for things to work. Is what I'm getting at. I, I and I don't and I understand what you're saying. There's a lot on the plate already, but we we need to actually do it. I mean, I don't know it any other way. I I don't want to wind up going through um, um, kind of a, a repeat of in. There weren't, we accepted last year because we didn't have any time. What, what are you going to complain over spilt milk? It was over with. But right now, as we're speaking right now, we've got some time to change what we went through last year to make sure it doesn't happen and, and there won't be that spilt milk last year. Does, I, I know you're looking like, oh, you know, you know, this is what I'm expecting tonight, sort of thing. But no, I, I know we keep having these things piled up because I keep mentioning when you keep at, when. When the board keeps adding work sessions, town hall and sessions, they're all good. But when you start looking at schedules and a full board of commissioners, you end up with these dates here that bunch together. So it, it's not a staff thing or anything about how many meetings, but I just want to make sure this board knows, you know, how many, many meetings do you want me to schedule in there and for what? All I need to know is that and I'll plug, I'll plug in the date. I say hopefully in a week or two I'll know about if the, if the 29th and the 22nd, if those are two open dates, we don't need a meeting. Yeah, I, um, I, I want to be clear. I'm not asking you to do or agree to anything tonight. Okay. All I was asking was to identify specific things that we need to do and, okay. and it, you know, think about it, but leave it up to the commission as to whether they think it's too aggressive of a schedule okay. or not, and that way we can talk about okay. it. We're not going to solve it tonight is what I'm okay. getting at. So is that yeah. fair yeah. enough, Mayor? Sure. Take a look at those dates and the schedule, and we'll talk about that again. Sounds good. Yeah. And you have a nice trip. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Liquors? That's it. Okay. Ms. Jacobs? I have no comments. Thank you. Okay. Commission Therapy? No comments, Mayor. Commission Donna? No comments, Mayor. Commissioner Vaticiotis. Mayor, are you going to talk about Memorial Day? No, you go ahead. I, I, I got I, other things that I can talk uh, I mean, I got more things to talk about. You go ahead. <laughs> now, I, just, I just want to uh, personally thank, uh, actually, on, if, on behalf of the commission, thank the uh, Tarpon Springs Police Department, Tarpon Springs Fire Department for an exceptionally uh, outstanding uh, ceremony uh, commemoration of Memorial Day. Um, I think the city manager and I were talking today, and it was the largest that we've I think had. So. He gave me a little of the history, and, and you, Chief Young, have inherited this from another person that had been doing this, and I, I think it's just a great way to combine departments with the honor guard and everything and, and show solidarity, and, and uh, uh, a lot of people out there just, um, it, it wasn't just showing up and waving the flag. It was a very uh, heartfelt event and somber event, which is what it should be on Memorial Day, a, a day of remembrance. So, and I think um, Sergeant Mathis had it right, freedom is not free, and, and that day yesterday reminded us of that our, um, on Memorial Day. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, i also uh, like to congratulate the thank the uh, police department um, and, and everybody involved. Uh, i also like to thank the uh, Elks Club for uh, providing the, uh, the meal for everybody, I think they do that every year, and I'm very appreciative to that. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, express my thanks to the ABC Action News for their uh, live coverage of Tarpa Springs at the Sponge Ducks on Thursday and Friday last week. 
They did an excellent job. We received many, many phone calls from different people. That was, uh, uh, it was a promotion that you can't pay for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a lot of people watched that. So I'm very grateful to that, for that. Uh, I attended the uh, East Lake High School graduation this morning. And I want to thank for the invitation that I received and the opportunity to be part of the ceremony. I am very, I'm so proud for all the students that they graduated, <coughs> and especially to see my granddaughter graduating today. So congratulate, congratulations to my Alexis. And I'm looking forward to attend the uh, Tarver Springs High School graduation, which is going to be Thursday. I believe it's 3 p.m. And uh, it would be an honor to uh, be part of the ceremony. So. That's all I have, and uh, could you, how about tomorrow's uh, uh, ceremony for the uh, historic district? Uh, go ahead, if you want to say, that's fine. Yeah. I, I didn't put that on there. No, no, I think it, me that. at 11 uh, a.m., we're going to have a, a formal ceremony for dedicating the, uh, the plaque for our historic district at the corner of Tarpon Avenue in, in Pinellas, Mother Mears Park, um, and um, I thought both Commissioner uh, Eggers and Commissioner Justice will be there, but uh, right now it's, it just shows uh, Justice. Is that correct? Yes, and now that I request uh, Commissioner Eggers' office call, and he's going to be running a tight schedule. And but he won't so, be there. So he, he may be there, okay. but, but he said that uh, they'd prefer uh, Mr. Justice to make the comments for the commissioners, okay. and then he'd be there, he'd be there. But uh, it was from his office request. Um, with his schedule and not knowing if he's going to be there, be there a little late or whatever, he didn't want to be on the program without a solid commitment. So he asked that Commissioner Justice uh, make the statement from the county commission. And it is open to the public. I yes. mean, of course. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. That was the purpose of my mentioning. Yeah. It. Thank okay. you. Thank you. You, you know, and I'm glad that you did because I didn't write it down. But uh, and also, I want to make sure people understand that this is a uh, a joint effort. It's an initiative of the uh, Pinellas County. Uh, commission as well as the city of Tarpa Springs. So it's, I um, invite everybody to be there at 11 o'clock. Well, that concludes the uh, work session and it's adjourned at 8.21 p.m. I even got a clock now. You like that clock? Yeah, I like you? that. You see that? <laughs>